Simple job this evening. Um, we have the two bottom pieces, uh, like so, and they mate together like this. And the pointy end is the bow, of course. Uh, well, not of course, uh, but the pointy end is the bow. And then um, we're also going to, so we're going to prepare these by drilling the holes. So as you'll notice there are holes in one side, not in the other side. We're going to prepare these by drilling the holes all the way through, so they're evenly uh, matched, perfectly matched holes in both sides. And then we'll um, go ahead and glue on the uh, doublers as well. These are reinforcing pieces along the edge, uh, that run along the edge of the bottom pieces. And they're in sheet number five, the long pieces you'll see in sheet number five. In fact, we can break those out while we've got it right here. There's one, came out a little easily. Uh, these are not tabbed very often, so they come out quite easily. Now, I will point out one thing on these um, doublers while we have them in hand. If uh, it's not all that noticeable, well, these two holes are noticeable here at the wide end. Um, those are quite easy to see, obviously. Um, but this, the other marking po points are not quite as obvious. They're just little divots, um, every probably every three or four inches, or a little bit more in this area. And you just have to watch carefully for those. Um, those you do not want to sand those out because those are important marking points. Those indicate where the V floors will be positioned. And these two holes at the back indicate where the 7A, 7B laminated um, bulkhead is positioned. So um, let's, uh, in fact, while, we're, while we have this piece in hand, um, let's mark those with a pencil um, because uh, they're pretty visible now, but if you get a little epoxy up over the edge there or anything, they'll be a little harder to see. So let's put a little pencil mark um, we want to uh, have these pencil marks as much as possible perpendicular to the, perpendicular to the center line. Uh, that would mean perpendicular to this surface uh, here, to this flat surface here. That's the center line of the piece, or you know, the front flat flat surface at the front is also indic indicative of the center line. Um, it doesn't hurt to. It'll make assembly easier later on if we do this carefully. So let's put it right along the edge of the table, and then I'll get a square, and we can mark it so we know everything's exactly true. So put the front flat against the table edge, and the back flat. Actually, they won't fit against the table edge because when you put this into shape, it, it changed it. So let's just start with the back edge against the table edge and we'll mark a few of these uh, that way and then when we get up farther along we'll make it sort of an average. We're just putting about a, uh, a 3 8 inch mark right centered in that little divot that has been machined into the piece. So between a quarter of an inch and half an inch of a mark. Now as I get into the middle, I'm going to cant my piece a little bit, so I'm averaging between the front and the back being lined up. And these are important marks because um, you want the piece to end up centered, uh, the piece you're attaching. Um, in fact, now that we've started, um, let's make these marks double, one at each edge of the hole of the divot. So um, as we glue our pieces on, we won't be hiding our marks. We'll still be able to see our mark and know that we have the piece perfectly centered between our marks. So I'm just... Um, putting marks along the outside edges of those holes instead of centered on the holes. Got that. And then back here, I'm going to do, again, the outside edges of the holes 
with a line all the way across for the 7A, 7B. Remember 7A, 7B are, because they're laminated together, they are a full eighth inch. So, and these holes are an eighth inch. So right um, lines exactly tangential to the outside edge of the holes should, should be precise indicators for the 7A, 7B bulkhead. Okay, there we go. So you can see those uh, the 7A, 7B lines, and then I don't know if you can see these short lines, but they're just little short lines, uh, um, double lines, um, marking the position of the other floor, V floor frames. Okay, and the same on the other doubler. It'll be nice to have this piece, this uh, taken care of. There shouldn't be much difference on these doublers. They're not the outside of the boat. It shouldn't really be much difference as far as which side is up or which side is down. But do do remember that you want mirror images. You don't want two sides the same. Um, if I lay this on top, lined up with the first doubler and marked it now on the top, what's the top surface here? That would not be helpful at all. So um, make sure you have mirror images of all the parts in fact. Okay, so we'll put marks along these, the same as on the other one, and um, I think you can carry on with that on your own. And um, now, what we're really trying to get to is the bottom pieces, and um, we want these to be perfectly lined up. If these aren't lined up exactly right when we drill the holes through, uh, your boat will be skewed. Um, uh, rather dramatically if you line them off really badly. Um, our drilling and cutting and everything is extremely precise, but the drilling is um, slightly uh, separated from the cutting process. It's a different tool that does the drilling, um, although it's mounted on the same same uh, device. So, um, so rather than drill holes in both sides and just hope that they're perfectly lined up when we machine the parts, um, it's it's safer for us to drill holes in one side and then have you drill through into the other side and then you'll know that those holes are absolutely 100% perfectly lined up. So get the bow, um, the stern actually, the rounded stern part lined up perfectly and get a paper clamp on there and then we'll work on getting the bow lined up. Okay. Now the bow should be lined up as far as forward and back, so it's just a matter of lining up sideways. Although check it, it should be should be quite precise there. And check the stern again. Now let's get a couple more clamps on, just to be absolutely certain that we don't have anything come out of alignment. And it should be lined up perfectly all the way along. Those pieces should be identical. Okay, now I'm going to flip this around so I can drill off the edge of the table. Uh, towards the back where the doubler overlaps we'll, and is glued on, we'll have to re-drill these. Uh, the holes that are covered up there. But um, And you could drill these holes after the doubler's on. But I find it easiest to clamp the pieces together without the doubler initially. And most of these holes are not going to be affected by the doubler. Okay, so drill the rest of the holes and um, drill, uh, drill the rest of the holes and finish marking the doubler pieces with your pencil marks and then we will um, clean up these pieces. I still haven't taken off the tabs so we'll clean up these pieces, sand off the tabs, same on the doublers um, and you're used to that. Uh, remember on the doublers it's the tabs that you're sanding off, the bumps not the uh, divots. You're not trying to sand down take the marking divots off just the tabs that stick out and that's real quick and easy and take the fuzz off as well um, and then we'll be back with that step accomplished in just a minute okay so that will clean up real quickly and easily take it all the way along
you're going to uh, clamp them to a board uh, because the epoxy is such slippery stuff to keep them lined up perfectly you can put a couple of push pins through the top uh, layer of plywood into the bottom layer of plywood uh, to keep the two pieces lined up perfectly while you uh, get your clamps on. Okay, and now we'll come back over here to the project we are working on here, which is the bottom pieces. And indeed, we'll use that same technique that we were just talking about with these bottom pieces of putting a um, push pin through from uh, through the top layer into the bottom layer to hold the two pieces uh, lined up as we get them clamped. So now we've got our all our markings on our doublers, and they are mir mirror images of each other. And um, we've got all our holes perfectly aligned pieces, and then drilled all our holes through so they're through both pieces in exact alignment, and that's very important. And so now we are ready to glue things together. Now this time, we since these pieces are bigger and more likely to twist and stuff if we just use the paper clamps, this time around we're going to, to glue the doublers on, we're going to weight the pieces down uh, and have weights holding them flat. So that glue joint will want to be um, holding the pieces totally flat. Okay, so you can just see how your doublers are going to fit on there. Remember, mirror images. Now's a good time. The bottoms um, are not, you haven't decided yet which side of the bottom is going to be in and which side is going to be out. So you want a perfectly smooth side for the bottom. Those sides look very good. And remember, mirror images again. We keep saying that, but somebody is going to call me up someday and say that they... Uh, miss, missed that point <laughs> and have two starboard bottoms or two starboard uh, sides or something. Okay, so um, that's how we're going to go. It's good to set things up. I mean, if once you get the glue mixed up and starting to spread, um, you're rushing and thinking about how you're spreading it and stuff, and that's the point at which you might mess up and end up with two starboard bottoms and two or two port bottoms. Um, Okay, so now we have everything set up nicely. We're going to give ourselves a little room so we can flip things over for spreading the glue. And then we'll get our weights. Virtually anything will work as weights. Um, tin cans work fine. Uh, you know, full of soup, uh, like Campbell soup cans. Or um, uh, little blocks. We use little blocks of marble often, which is quite nice. Um, Books are not quite as good for this project because um, they stick out so far on both sides. Um, it doesn't take a lot of weight, but you do want enough weight that everything is held true and tight. Okay, so um, we're going to mix up our epoxy. On this, it's a fairly big glue job. And again, now you can see uh, we've laid everything out in such a way that um, all we have to do is coat the, the side that's exposed. If we just moved these aside, apart, it wouldn't have been quite as clear. So we're flipping these over, and then when we flip them back, um, everything will be the way we want it to be when we glue it. Okay, and you are covering up some of the holes you just drilled. Um, yes, wasted effort, I agree, uh, because those will have to be re-drilled. Okay, and you're covering up one hole at the front end. I mean, uh, yes, front end, bow end of the boat as well. Oh, um, I missed a little fuzz here. So um, check, make sure you don't have any fuzz, because that, just the thickness of the fuzz will tend to hold the parts, of, the pieces apart just a little bit more than you want. Okay, oh, and one tab there. Make sure the tabs are off, it's not gonna, there's no, no way to um, get the tabs off after it's glued together. It's not going to be easy, at least. So um, make sure you sand the tabs off, especially along the inside edges. The problem there. Okay, so we're going to mix up. Um, let's see, we've got oh, we've got quite a few surface areas, but um, let's give ourselves a little bit of an assist here, um, so we don't so we know where we're going to spread epoxy on this bottom piece. 
Um, we're going to hold this in place. This line, you want it to be pretty, pretty precise, but it's not too critical. We're going to draw a pencil line along the inside of our doubler, and then that'll be the indicator of where we need the epoxy spread for gluing these two pieces together. We're going to spread epoxy on the doubler and on the bottom piece again, so we know we get a good joint. Okay, so there's that one. And the other one. And now for this much surface area, let's um, go ahead and do three large marks of pre-thickened epoxy and three small marks of hardener. And um, we'll get that mixed up and then be right back. Do both sides, uh, of course, on the bottom. We'll do a pencil line on the second side as well. Now we're ready. Um, three large marks of pre-thickened resin and three small marks of hardener. And I stepped into another room and mixed this right with the bottom of the container sitting on a 100 watt incandescent bulb um, to uh, warm it up a little bit for two reasons. Well, one is um, when it's thick, it's kind of, it's, it doesn't spread as easily. It's not as liquid. And um, secondly, uh, when you warm it up before you put it on, uh, it's going to set up quite a bit more quickly. And it is cold in here. It's probably, uh, probably not much above 50 in this work workspace. So um, if you're working in a cold area, it works well to warm up your resin while you're mixing it. And don't get it too hot, though, or it'll go, <laughs> you won't get it on your project before it sets off. Okay, so we're just spreading the resin right up to our pencil line there. It doesn't really matter if you go over your line a little bit, but uh, that resin is not going to do much right now for you. Later on we will coat um, the bottom piece with resin, um, but we want to leave most of it uncoated now. Don't coat the whole piece with resin now, because when you glue the um, V floors on, you want them to be glued to um, bare wood because the epoxy uh, will adhere better to the bare wood. Um, epoxy does stick to epoxy fairly well, as long as there's no uh, buildup of amine blush on the surface. Uh, you have to wipe that off with water or with acetone either way. And then you can get a pretty good bond, especially if you sand it lightly. But um, you're bonding to the surface of a material in that case, whereas when you're gluing to bare wood, you're bonding into this into the material. Um, the epoxy actually soaks in. You can see how the coated parts are much darker than the other parts. That's because the epoxy is so soaked into the surface, and so a, a joint where you're bare, gluing to bare wood is much stronger because you can't you can't destroy that joint without tearing the wood apart because the epoxy is down in the wood itself. So it's always better to glue onto bare wood than it is to glue onto on top of epoxy. So rather than coat the entire thing with epoxy now, we will wait until our floor frames are glued and filleted in place, and then then we can coat, and then we can coat the entire bottom. Okay. Now um, the two mistakes here in coating this one is obviously getting too little epoxy on. The other is getting too much epoxy on, and um, if you get way too much epoxy, it's going to squeeze out all over the place. Now, if you don't put enough weights on, you're going to some of it won't have squeezed out. It should have squeezed out, and you'll have a lumpy surface, um, so a smooth surface, um, because you'll have epoxy that sets up. You know, it's is sort of in big pads underneath between the pieces. Um, but you don't want voids, so uh, again, the way to tell how you're doing is with reflected light. Uh, you really can't look right at the surface and tell how much epoxy you have on there um, without the light reflecting off of it. And then you can see where you have more buildup. And uh, some places you'll find the epoxy has sunk in more than other places, and so you can recoat those places, but typically it'll be pretty smooth. Okay, and we'll get all the way to the back here, and then our mating piece. And again, I did look and make sure that we are doing the right side of this piece, but we have it set on the table um, before in the right orientation. So, um, so 
we wouldn't really have to think too much about it at this point. And this is the correct side. Now we've got the pink pieces coated, and that was exactly the right amount. I mean, there's, there's not even a brushful left in there. It's almost totally empty. So um, that will give you a good guideline if you had a lot extra at this point, uh, having finished spreading them both, um, you're probably not putting it on heavy, heavily enough. If you ran out short, you're probably putting it on too heavily and you're going to have an excess amount of squeeze out. So, um, so you can kind of gauge how you're doing in that way. If you, if you ran out um, before you finished, you could, um, you could mix a little bit more or you could thin it, you know, brush it off where it looks too thick, get some reflecting light, brush it off where it looks a little thicker, and finish your job with what you've brushed off the too thick areas. Okay, so I'm, I'm not desperately, I mean, I could scrape a teensy, well, no, I can't get much more out of there. You know, just the brush is still wet, is all. Um, okay, and then uh, we're ready to flip this over onto our other piece. Oopsie. And line it up. Gloves would not be a bad idea at this point. Um, you do want to be very careful about not getting epoxy on your hands. Uh, if you do get any epoxy on your hands, stop everything and clean it off. Uh, for two reasons. Partly, it'll get all over everything if it's on your fingers and you'll get sticky fingerprints all over your wood pieces and all over your tools and everything. And um, the other reason is because if it's on your fingers for very long, uh, some people will develop an allergic reaction to epoxy and um, a rash. It's not, not life-threatening at that point, but it makes it so that um, it's very difficult to work with epoxy subsequently because even just um, getting near it may cause a rash without even getting it on your on your skin. So be very careful with working with epoxy. Now we'll start to weight our piece down and get make sure everything is going to set up entirely flat and perfectly aligned. For the alignment let's get a couple of push pins in and um, that'll hold it together in perfect position uh, here are the push pins so um, you get the bow the back end absolutely perfect that looks good and I'm not pinning it to the table I'm just pinning the two pieces together so they are perfectly aligned is that epoxy slippery stuff I have all sorts of weights here, different configurations of weights, but these zinc ingots are kind of nice. The soup cans would work fine here. Um, you could use a few heavier weights to make sure everything is totally flat, and then um, a bunch of AA batteries aligned along there would work. Um, so all sorts of different options, objects that you can use for weights here. Uh, the, the big thing at this point is not to have the table get uh, bumped and all your weights topple over. And then once you get it all weighted, you want to check and make sure you've got epoxy squeezing out everywhere. Uh, just a thin thin line of epoxy but you don't want any voids if you can see uh, in between the two pieces you've got a void and um, you need more weight there so you don't have the void so um, this is all looking very clean and very tight uh, like there are no voids anywhere so that's what we want outside edge yeah that looks good a little more light. Um, 
I don't have as good light from this angle. A little more light, yeah. I can see the shiny bead of epoxy right along the edge, but there's really no very little excess um, showing out coming out. And I need a couple more weights right there at the back, and then we're good. Okay, let me zoom in. You can see if see if you can see that epoxy, how light a coat there is coming out um, there. Okay, well that that'll give you an idea. There's a little more coming out right along there, in that area. But you can see it's it's very moderate the amount that's coming out. Um, okay, so that's really what you're aiming for, um, and that's the place back here. I don't want to leave that like that um, at the back end because. Uh, that may not be tight enough. So I'll get a couple more batteries and set them on there. And then we'll do the same thing on our second piece. So anything that you can line up along there is fine. Okay, good. And then we'll let those pieces set up. Hey, let's go ahead with one more small uh, job here. Uh, but this, has, this is an important job. It has to be done quite precisely. Uh, the tools we have for this, um, I've mixed up two large marks of uh, pre-thickened resin with two small marks of hardener and um, then we'll need a uh, right angle um, uh, square or something that will work to give you an exact right angle and you'll need your phenolic powder as well and a spoon. Okay, what we're doing in this step is using, um, starting with 7A, 7B, the piece 7A, 7B that we've glued together with the two wooden um, square pieces sticking out towards, those are sticking towards the back of the boat, the back of the boat, the drag, drag tail stern is here, and then we're using the um, sort of U-shaped piece uh, here that we glued together, we put doublers on the bottom, and there's a slot, um, an open slot between the two doublers there. Um, we're using that piece. That open slot between the doublers will be faced down. So the top surface of the um, drake tail support piece is going to be the single piece of plywood that wraps all the way around. Okay, so it's going to go like this with the slot and the doublers on the bottom side. So just like so, and it is on the same side as the two square pegs that stick out. And it will be exactly flush. It will not be sitting on top of the 7A, 7B. It will be exactly flush with the top edges of 7A, 7B, like so. So exactly flush here. You see, the like, uh, not sitting on top, but exactly flush with the top edges. Okay and it will be at a 90 degree, exactly a 90 degree angle to the 7A, 7B piece. Uh, uh, let's see there. Um, okay, so a little bit, um, you know, you want to make sure this piece comes out just right. Um, let's start with our pre thickened epoxy and let's do the end grain first here on the uh, drake tail support piece. And remember, we need those um, cutouts at the corners to stay clear of epoxy during this whole process because uh, otherwise we won't be able to put wire ties through our small holes in the corners of the um, 7A, 7B piece. Okay, and then um, let's coat the edge of the uh, drake tail support piece, the bottom side, the bottom edge there, uh, because we'll be doing a fillet onto that and we'll be coating putting the fillet on the 7A the back side of the 7A 7B lamination and so we'll coat there now for the fillet we're going to add phenolic powder it's going to be a little hard to keep those uh, drilled holes clear of epoxy but you can re-drill them after this step, so not to worry too much about them. 
Okay, let's lay that right there. Now, the phenolic powder, you want to be careful not to get it up in the air or breathe it. So, be, even just opening the container is time to be a little cautious. Okay, and um, the amount of phenolic powder is going to be somewhat dependent on the temperature and um, how fast your epoxy is setting up and very various factors. So we don't tell you an exact amount for that phenolic powder. We tell you what you're aiming for, which is a creamy smooth mixture that doesn't sag. So let's look at this mixture here. Um, okay, so oops. So that's um, that's sitting pretty still there on the brush. If I just hold it steady here against the yellow, you can see it better. It's starting to sag a little bit. Okay, now see that? That's a little more sag than I want. I like the creamy smooth, but I don't want it to sag like that because that will mean your fillet slumps. So I'm going to add a little bit more phenolic powder. I do want a, a mixture where we don't want it to be thick and putty-like because if it's too thick, any little barbs that are sticking up <coughs> will stay as sharp barbs. They won't fall back down into the epoxy. Okay, now this is looking better. Uh, if you can see that blob, it's starting to sag just a little bit off the brush, but that's a pretty big blob. Well, it's still moving. Let's add a little bit more. So, the, when you test it to see if it's going to sag, you have to give it a little time because it may not sag immediately. You want it to be sag, really sag proof to the point that it'll set up in almost exactly the same shape that it's in in when you get the blob on your brush on your brush okay now let's see that's still sagging a little bit more okay still let's add a little bit more let's see how do our sag test okay that's a really big blob it's sagging very slowly, but I think we're we're going to be good with that. Okay, and it's still got that creamy consistency. Okay. Now we don't want to get it in the edge. We don't want the fillet to cover up that hole, so or to fill up the um, corner. Um, cut out the corner notch on our piece. So let's be careful there. There. Hopefully you can see that, how that is. And then we add our piece here. And um, since uh, you don't want to sit here holding this piece while it sets up, you need, you're going to need some way to brace it. Uh, the two pieces, the two bottles of um, CA are going to work fine. And now we have to align it perfectly. I would suggest you not try to do this by eye. Uh, because you really do want it to be exactly right. So, so uh, try to find a, something that's perfectly square, whether it's an official square or not, uh, something that will get it exactly right. And just keep working with it until you get it. So it looks that looks perfect. And that side, let's see about this side. And that looks perfect over here too. Okay. And now, let's 
to add to our fillet here. So we make sure this piece is going to be strong. Again, remember, don't go all the way to the edge there where you want that notch. So I'm going up about a quarter of an inch, a little more than maybe three-eighths of an inch up onto the uh, U-shaped piece, the Drake tail support piece, and about uh, three-eighths of an inch out onto the um, 7A, 7B piece. Okay, and if you can see clearly enough, you see how all the little sharp pieces of epoxy have faded back into that mixture and left a clean surface. Let's get in a little bit closer on that. Well, before we zoom in, let's check with our square. That did shift just a little bit, so we got to move it out so it's flush with the top edge. Um, flush with the top edge there, and still square. There we go. Perfect. And this side looks good too. This is the time to check it really carefully, not after it's set up and then you check it and you don't have many. You'd have to use a saw to get it apart at that point. So check it really carefully at this point and make sure you've got it exactly the way you want it. Now I've got some extra squeeze out on this surface over here, on the top surface. Uh, I'm not worried about that. That'll sand off fine. Um, and it is on plastic so it's not going to glue itself to plastic. Uh, to the surface. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit more and you can see more closely exactly how that fillet looks. See if it'll stay focused. There we go. Okay, see there's quite a bit of a glob of epoxy there. Um, that's going to give it lots of support. There we are. On the other side you can see there's a little epoxy squeezing out. Um, if I tried to clean that off now I'd probably mess it all up and 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 nudge the piece out of position. So um, just leave it for now and sand that off later. It's not a huge amount of epoxy. And the phenolic powder sands off, you know, a mixture with phenolic powder in it sands fairly easily. Okay? So um, the big thing now is not to let anybody knock the table um, because then you'll be in trouble. And uh, uh, lock, the cat out, lock the cat out of the room for sure. <laughs> okay. And... Uh, we'll let that set up and um, when we come back we'll have that piece all together uh, and solid. Okay, bye now. Okay, now uh, this is a little bit out of sequence but um, because we've actually gotten further along on this piece than where you're at right now and you'll see how this is done in a few minutes. But um, I forgot to draw the center lines on these uh, pieces that we glued together. And it'll be a little bit trickier to draw the center line on this side of this piece now. We do need a center line there, um, but not a problem. We'll be able to get it. So um, this step is just drawing center lines, vertical center lines, uh, down the piece. And you want these to be very, very precise. So this piece is seven inches wide. So I'll make a mark at three and a half along the top edge, like so and uh, three and a half right there and then I'm going to make a mark right at the point as well so I'm not trying to guess the point as I draw my line okay and then connecting those two marks here sharp pencil you want a very sharp precise line and make sure your pencil line is lining up with your marks exactly and so there we are then I'm going to transfer this mark across to the other side at the top there and down and now I can draw my uh, and I'll do my mark I'll do my mark there at the point as well and draw that line, center line good light and if you need reading glasses, if you use reading glasses, this is a great time to pull them out. Okay, so center line like that, both sides, and um, that piece is ready. Um, 
I'll do that on this piece as well. The uh, this is what either 5A or 3A, 5AB or 3AB. Um, this one's 5AB because it has the uh, slot slot for the um, propeller shaft coming out. And then uh, I'll do the center line on this one as well. On this one, um, you could measure all the way across, but it's easier to measure that uh, cutout on this piece is three inches wide. So I'm going to use that as my center for my center line and just make my mark at one and a half inches there. And then I'm going to check that mark because these, these uh, center lines are not just for fun. They're really cru crucial to getting your boat true. So, uh, yeah, that looks good. And then my mark here at the corner. This is a little harder to pinpoint because um, it's not as sharp an angle by the time you get to the back of the boat. So I'm going to check this a second way. I'm going to measure from the corners as well. So that's 3 and 3 eighths. And this one is 3 and 3 eighths in from the corner. So that looks good. And then I'll draw this one. And then I'm going to transfer it to the other side which is a little trickier, but if you're doing this in the sequence that we've, <laughs> we can do uh, time travel with the video. Uh, if you're doing this in the sequence where I'm showing it to you, you won't have all these pieces glued on yet. You'll have, um, well actually, it'd be nice to do the center line before we glue our, pin, our pins in here, our square, square wooden blocks in. Um, but uh, you'll be able to figure it out uh, when it, whenever you do it and however you do it. Um, and then we'll do the center lines on the rest of the V floors as well. So all the V floors now, uh, you want to have, you want to uh, push them out, sand the tabs off, and get center lines on all the V floors. Okay, and um, then we'll move on to our next step. Okay. The next thing we uh, need to do is quite quick and easy. Um, we need to put center lines on our V floors. And I'll just show you um, how to do that quickly and then you can proceed with it. Um, uh, let's start with this one. I've got a line on there but I'll show you how it went. Um, measure across the top and this one's uh, 3A and 3B laminated together. And you'll see that they're exactly seven inches. Uh, it's exactly seven inches from uh, tip to tip. And so make a mark at three and a half inches. And then also make a mark at the point um, here. So you have a clear mark and then you can look at it um, clearly before you put your ruler on top of it to draw your line. And then put your ruler on there and draw a very straight line between the two with a very sharp pencil. This needs to be quite precise or else if this is off your boat will be slightly lopsided. It um, won't be true. Okay and on this one with the cutout for the uh, this one this is uh, 5A 5B has a cutout for the propeller shaft here um, like so uh, further back in the boat. This one's a little trickier to uh, measure because of that cutout um, but uh, so you want to be careful with this one. Um, now I'm going to move my ruler, so I'm still using the 7 inch rule, uh, 7 inch uh, measurement, but the uh, piece is an eighth of an inch longer on each edge. And um, so I'll make my three and a half mark. So I've got extra space here and extra space beyond the 7 there. And then I'll make my mark. And I can check that the other way um, and see three and a half. Uh, that keeps me from having to do any fancy math. If I measure the piece exactly and then split it in half, that would work. But um, I'm, I might make a mathematical mistake there and come out wrong. And again, I'll make my mark for my point here. Again, that's... Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's sharp enough that it's not too hard to get that accurately. And uh, then draw that line. Now there's a way to check these. It's not a bad idea to check them because 
you want these to be very precise, you can check these with um, a square or the square end of your ruler in this case, if you have a good square end to your ruler. Um, in fact, we can do it like this. And that looks perfectly square. That looks very nice. And of course, this depends on this top edge being perfectly flat with no bumps of epoxy. And in fact, this one wasn't perfectly flat. Yeah. Okay. And you can see, I guess the, the real point here is that we are trying for a lot of precision. Um, which is fun, and um, certainly not too difficult if you know that precision is important. Okay, let's check this one again now that we've got it square. Um, and you know, that does look good. I think we had equal bumps of epoxy on both sides actually. Okay, and we'll check this one for square. Cheat a little bit on this one too. Four and one eighth, and that gives me two and a sixteenth right here going off that cutout. Okay, so that was off a little bit there too. Okay, now I think we'll be a little bit better. So you can see with these, um, anytime you're trying for real precision, uh, don't rely on just one view of it. Um, let's take several views. Oh, that looks much better. Much happier with that. Um, Let's try it from the other side. That looks very nice. Okay, that'll work. So, um, the point is, uh, check it. Double check it from different angles and different ways of checking it. Um, and that side looks, that side looks good. That's, that's good. Okay. Make sure the ends of your ruler, if you're going to do it that way with your ruler, make sure the ends of your ruler are square. Um, okay, and go ahead and mark the rest of them. This piece is a little trickier, but not really hard. Um, this angle is a little less sharp, so it's even harder to pick the center of that uh, point. Um, so on this piece, it's good to measure both directions. And we get three and three eighths there and three and three eighths here and so I have got my mark exactly centered there and on this one I measured um, across the uh, cutout in three inches so I made a mark at one and a half inches right in the center of the cutout, uh, the cutout since the cutout is centered in the piece and then on the back side I've got my two marks but my ruler is too wide to fit in there so, uh, so you need another form of straight edge. Just a hacksaw blade um, is going to work fine. You can check, make sure the hacksaw blade is perfectly straight, and yes, it is. And um, then do your pencil line with the narrower straight edge. And uh, when you make the pencil line on this back side, since the piece isn't as wide, your measurement isn't is going to be just slightly less than three and three eighths on each side. So don't count on that three and three eighths uh, without measuring both sides, because the three and three eighths is not going to be exactly right. So it's a little bit less. Okay, and that looks good. So I I actually made a three and three eighths inch mark here from the corner, and another three and three eighths inch measuring from the other side. So I ended up with two marks, and I drew my center line right between those two marks. Um, uh, so that was how I did it. Okay, and now we have this piece with its marking on both sides, and there are a few other V floors that we want to mark as well, so you can go ahead and do those. But I'm going to move right ahead, since we don't know, need those V floors, so I'll mark them in a minute. Um, we're going to go right ahead and finish up this uh, um, false transom uh, bulwark, 7A, 7B, and the um, uh, drake tail support piece and finally the rudder support column. Now um, this piece, uh, the precision here, this uh, getting your 
big tail support piece square with the 7A, 7B piece was just practice <laughs> with your uh, lining up things because this uh, rudder support column is a little trickier to line up so um, so this is a going to be a bit of a challenge for you but um, if you make sure uh, that all the parts are ready and clean and everything then it should go really quite easily for you and we'll give you a lot of tips on this so the first tip is this top edge of the rudder support column this uh, little narrow edge so t it's actually going to be the top edge this is how it's going to go together okay like so um, I'll show you different angles there let me move my fingers out of the way so it's going to sit together like that um, so this narrow edge is the top edge and the front edge here is what you're going to be lining up with um, the front edge of the drake tail support piece so and that back angle will come right up and touch at the top of the drake tail support piece okay you, if you line up the the rudder support column the back angle of that rudder support column with the bottom of the drake tail support piece it's not going to be right because uh, your drake tail support will want to have to if it's tight along the rudder support column the back edge they'll have to bow bow out to get over the drake tail up on top of the drake tail support piece on the deck so we're going to line up and you look at this and you say well that's coming that's going to clear the drake tail support piece well yes that's correct because remember there's a deck on top of the drake tail support piece so we have another thickness of plywood on top of the drake tail support piece so um that's why this angle if you if you look at the angle coming up the back of the rudder support column it's missing the drake tail support piece but it will hit the deck just right hit the edge of the deck just right okay so that gives you a little preface now we're going to flip this side upside down and have it flat on the table make sure there are no lumps underneath it on the table that your flat surface of the table is is true and we're going to position this piece and i'll show you how we're going to hold it in place and we're going to have several measurements to um to um check to make sure it's exactly at the right angle and positioned exactly right okay you can see we're having a little fun with batteries there um but uh you don't have to have that many double a's to uh get those pieces uh glued together um that's the doublers on the bottom pieces you don't need that many double a's but um it was fun setting them up uh just about anything that's uh has a little weight um and uh tin cans will work great full of soup or um just about anything uh paperweights um sometimes paperweight on edge might be best like you see those marble slabs or uh, metal weights fishing weights just whatever you can find that has a little bit of weight to it uh, i just want to catch you up with a few things we've done um all the V floors from the smallest to the largest now have been popped out and the tabs sanded off, the fuzz sanded off and uh, center lines drawn on both sides. Um, those center lines are quite important so when you're drawing them you can split the difference to make a mark on the top side for the top edge you can split the difference between um, this distance across and make a mark in the middle and then mark right at the point at the bottom but then just to uh, double check yourself when you draw the line use a square edge as well either a bigger square like this to make sure that your um, line is perpendicular to the top surface to the uh, horizontal top of the floor frame um, or in this case I actually was using a smaller square um, the ends of this ruler I checked are perfectly square and so um, use those two methods if there's a slight discrepancy just kind of split the difference don't uh, don't obsess over it but um, these tips are pretty narrow uh, pretty thin points and they could it can have gotten rounded off a little bit or one might be slightly different than the other so um, so do a double check on those center lines because they are important and um, you want your boat to be as true as possible. 
Okay, now, um, what we're doing uh, next, you thought this was a little tricky getting this part together. Well, <laughs> that was just a preface to doing this next piece, the rudder support column. Now, um, to get this uh, started right, you need this top surface, that little uh, thin, narrow surface there, to be totally free of any glue bumps and totally, uh, totally flat. And you also need to have the groove here um, in the uh, drake tail support piece totally clear of epoxy and flat as well. You could use um, a number of ways to clean that out. Uh, a file would probably be the best. Um, in fact, I'll hit that with a file now. Don't angle it though. Um, with the file, don't, don't put an angle into it. You want it to be totally flat. We're just cleaning off any glue that might be in there. So you're down to just the flat piece of wood that you started with. Okay. Oh, and there was one other thing I wanted to show you uh, while we have the file here. Um, there are a number of ways you can handle this. There, in this piece here, there was a tab right in the corner there. And the easiest way to get that out would be with the file like this, with the square edges. Um, and that'll do, an, that'll do the nicest job probably, but a piece of sandpaper on the edge of your sanding block will do it too. Um, again, this is one of the pieces you have to be really delicate with because there's not a lot of wood um, strength here in the, in the corner. So, um, you have to have the tab right here, we, we want to be careful. So this is the other way to do it, is just with a piece of sandpaper. Um, but the file will probably do a cleaner, slightly cleaner, sharper job. Well, the sandpaper is actually working nicely too. Um, finish off this file. So you can see I'm holding it right at the weak spot there. Um, so I don't stress it any more than necessary. There we go. Very clean. Um, okay, I'll set that piece aside. Okay, now what we're doing tonight is we're going to glue this uh, rudder support column onto the drake tail support piece. Now that has to be sitting totally flat. If you just have it sitting in there, it's probably going to be leaning back because it's kind of back heavy. Um, it has to be sitting totally flat and for the alignment we want this point right here the point right there on the uh, tip, top tip, forwards tip of the rudder support column, we want that precisely lined up with the edge of the inner edge of the drape tail support piece, like so. Now that looks funny because the back edge doesn't line up now, um, but the reason the back end isn't going to line up is, of course this is all, we're doing this upside down, this is all going to be sitting like this on the back of the boat. The reason this doesn't line up at the back when you line up the front and it's in the right position is the drake tail is coming up at this angle. And you can see there's still a little bit of gap there with the drake tail support piece, but remember the deck is actually um, mimics this curve and sits on top of the drake tail support piece. So when you add one more layer of plywood up on top of the drake tail support piece, that angle is going to be perfect and um, is going to just uh, just kiss the edge of the deck really just nicely. So you can see that there really is a fair amount of this rudder support piece, the angle here sticking out behind the drake tail support pieces, the laminated to a piece of pieces. Um, or actually, it's not laminated right where that piece is, but uh, behind this. Um, so, and that's what you want. Okay, so positioning. And then the other, there's several um, key factors here. First of all, the angle is determined by the piece being flat, flat down on that narrow surface. That's a little hard to tell, um, flat down on that narrow surface. But I'll give you one other key to determining whether you have that right. Um, the other key is measuring from, hold this, uh, I have to hold it so you can see it, not so I can see it. Measuring from the very 
point here of the V to the corner here. And that measurement, the corner on the um, rudder support column, that measurement should be 2 inches and 1 16th. So uh, 2 inches and 1 16th from the V to the corner there. Okay? Oh, now I'm showing myself. Uh, although, you have to turn it the other way for you to see. Okay, with the inside flush there, then this measurement is 2 and 1 16th, and that should be exactly resting flat down there on the drake tail support piece when that's at 2 and 1 16th, measured not straight in, square, square with, we're not measuring square with this piece, we're not measuring straight in against it, down lower. We're measuring at an angle to the tip of the V right there. So you can set the ruler right on top of the V for that measurement. Okay, so that should be just like that. So that's the critical measurement, that 2 and 1 16th inch. And that should mean that this piece is sitting pretty flat in that V, in that groove. Okay, and then the last um, key is, well, two more, is to have the piece um, perfectly um, vertical, um, perpendicular to the drake tail support piece. Drake tail support piece, remember, is this piece, this horseshoe piece that right, wraps around there. So um, this piece has to be, if the drake tail support piece is sitting flat on the table, then you can use the table surface for your square and make sure that you have a square angle there, so the piece, the rudder support column is precisely square. Keep my hands out of the way for you. Um, so that we'll check that. We'll check the two and two inches and one sixteenth uh, to this pointed uh, the tip of the V here. And there's one more thing. We don't want this that gr that slot is loose enough that the piece can could be pivoted sideways and your other things, your measurements uh, and perpendicular could still be on. So the last thing we'll do is we'll get down at eye level and sight and make sure that that piece is pointing. See if I can get that you lined up with it. We'll make sure that this line here doesn't point off to the side uh, and hit the um, 7A, 7B bulwark um, off to one side of the center line or the other side We'll make sure when we sight that that line along the top of the, well, along the bottom edge um, of the rudder support column is going to point right at the center line here. Okay, so that that's important. To, don't set it up so you can't sight that. So I'm going to have to set it up so I can sight it, uh, but also so you can see what we're doing. Um, oh, and don't glue this uh, rudder support column on um, backwards like that. Uh, that won't get you anywhere. Uh, remember, it's this piece sits like this in the bottom of the boat. The back end of the and the um, deck is going to sit flush on top here, and the back end of the boat has this beautiful drake tail uh, wrap around stern and the drake tail is at this angle here. Okay, so hopefully that keys you in. This is a little bit, uh, gonna be a little fiddly, but not too bad. And we have mixed up one large mark of pre-thickened resin with one small mark of hardener. And remember on the hardener, when we're just doing one mark, I never trust that uh, first, the bottom mark on the syringe, because depending on how you set that label on, uh, that could be off a little bit. So I always pull like three marks into the syringe when I just want one and then I just squeeze out very carefully one mark and then I squeeze the other two marks back into the, into the hardener container. Okay, um, so first let's coat the area that we're going to be gluing uh, with the clear. Um, well, it's not clear actually, it's pre-thickened. But the pre-thickened is only partially thick, so it still soaks into the wood nicely. And um, 
once we add the phenolic powder, the pre-thickened becomes thick enough that you're not going to get much saturation of the wood at that point. Okay, and the end grain on the top and the sides. Okay, you don't want to put any on the back surface because that's where the drake tail is going to lie. So keep the epoxy off of that surface. Okay, now, um, one of the tricks here is to make this piece not tip over backwards. Uh, it automatically, if it's just sitting there, it wants to tip over backwards. So you can't just rely on the glue kind of keeping it in place. The other trick is going to be keeping it from tipping sideways. And we're going to use a couple of um, supports on that. Uh, again, those um, the bottles for the uh, CA work quite nicely. Okay, so um, one trick is to keep the pressure on the front edge here so it doesn't tip over just like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is take a scrap of material, just a long thin piece of material off the edge of one of the uh, panels, and we'll use a little tape on the end so we don't glue it in. And a little packaging tape. Well, epoxy doesn't stick at all, at all packaging tape. It's uh, this clear packaging tape. Um, so that'll work well. Uh, you could use some other form of tape and probably you could test other forms of tape first and see if epoxy sticks to them. Um, okay, so here's our little tool and um, let's uh, trim that tape to fit a little bit better. We want to give ourselves the biggest, all the, all the advantages we can on this, on this step because it's not the simplest step. So just take your time. It's small glue up. Unless it's really warm in your shop, you have plenty of time for it. And um, so here, now we have a little tool there um, with uh, packaging tape on the end of it. And we trim the packaging tape along the sides. Okay, now what we're going to do is put that underneath the um, 7A, 7B. We want to line things up exactly right when we put this down because we can't see it afterwards um, and then we want our weight on it now we're going to check that alignment remember the alignment is flush on the inside surface here so that looks just right there and then we'll weight this piece right here that um, I moved something so I want to check it again so let's, um, you have plenty of, plenty of time on this glue up. It's such a small glue up. Still looks, uh, it didn't get out of position. So let's put our system back together. And give yourself plenty of working room. I've got this piece in the way. Okay. And make sure your table surface is flat where you're doing this. Okay, and that should hold it for us. Okay, now let's check the alignment. I can look from this side of, as well as from the back um, for the alignment. And we're off. We're pointing way over here on the side there. Let me get this out of the way. We're pointing off to the side here. So we need to adjust that. So we need to twist the piece, move this over a little bit. Twist the piece. Let's check that. Well, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, that looks, uh, gosh, you know, I don't know which way I'd move it. That looks pretty darn clean. Okay, so we got it. That, we got that part. Now, how about the perpendicular? Are we going to be okay with that? I'm going to cite that from over uh, the other side with the square. And that looks good, too. No, the brush, the brush is a little bit too thick to really fit in there without bumping things and nudging things, changing positions. So I'm going to take, I took a little uh, piece of plywood from the edge of uh, one of the sheets, and I'm going to sand the end of that so it's square and not all rough. And I want to give myself, you know, the best chance possible to get this in one go without bumping it out of place and having to realign it. Okay, so now I have a nice little working tool there, and 
I'll just take a little bit of my epoxy here and put it right on the tip there. And let's see how this is going to go. Let's see how this works. Let's see. Yeah, there. Okay. And I'll just do a little fillet there. This is kind of delicate work, but with the right tools, it's easy. We've got one more measurement to do. Uh, you were probably wondering when I was going to do that. So, uh, that 2 and 1 16th um, inch measurement. So I'm going to get this fillet on, and then I can still adjust it. So, we'll get that 2 and 1 16th inch uh, measurement here in a minute. Probably was blocking your view a little bit there. Um, so you can see we're just putting a sort of glob of epoxy. It's about a comes up about a quarter of an inch on the rudder support column and goes out about a quarter of an inch on the fake tail support piece. Now this piece won't uh, won't be terribly strong um, with just a fillet, a little teensy fillet down at the bottom. But when it when the bottom edge is glued into the bottom of the boat, um, and then the drake tail is wrapped around, uh, everything's supporting everything else, and at that point it will be very strong. Okay, so now the final measurement. Let's see if we got this right. It is two and one sixteenth inches, right to the back surface of the. Um, 7AB uh, laminated together, the back surface, the closest distance. Okay, and that is 2 and 1 16th, exactly. So we're good. Um, don't forget that last measurement though, because at this point you can still nudge that piece one way or the other. But since, um, since I have ha the uh, top, that na narrow top edge of the uh, rudder support column perfectly flat and true and I didn't sand it to a new angle it's just exactly the way it was cut out and I got the um, slot in the drake tail support piece the horseshoe shaped piece uh, totally clean of epoxy that means that my measurement um, should be exactly right without having to nudge it however if you, ha if you have to nudge it that's fine just make sure it stays uh, in place now I'd probably have, if I didn't have um, packaging tape on my little uh, clamping um, system here, uh, that piece would be permanently glued into it and I might break something trying to get that piece free. So um, this piece that I put the weight on, the long piece, um, is not part of the assembly. It's just to hold things in place while things set up. Okay, and now... Um, it's best to double check everything. Double check that you're lined up, pointing right at the center line. Perfect. And um, double check. I wouldn't, at this point, put your square right against your piece. I would just use it as a sighting mechanism to make sure things are still square. That looks exactly right. Yes, very nice. Good work. And you could check that 2 and 1 16th inch measurement one more time. But in checking, don't, don't disrupt what might be perfect already by touching it. Okay, so um, that went very smoothly. And now we have this piece all together and ready to install in the boat. Um, when we get to that stage, when we get the two bottom pieces put together and the side pieces uh, taped in place and um, then this piece will be ready to ready to add okay i think this is going very well very smoothly now i do have some extra resin here i just um you know epoxy is just such an amazing thing and you know a valuable resource so i don't like to waste it so uh we can take a couple of small parts and glue them together at this point laminate them together uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Probably don't want to work right where you were working before um, because you don't want to bump that piece at all. We've got everything just right. Don't let anybody nudge the table or anything like that. Um, 
because we want that to set up just the way we have it. Okay, so um, in part uh, sheet number three, there are a couple of nice small parts that we can work with. Uh, so let's use those. And we're just going to laminate these uh, together. If it's really warm, you may be running out of time with your epoxy, but this is a quick job and you can probably get it probably get it done and use that epoxy up. Um, so I'm taking the tabs off. If you're watching the video and then working, you can have these parts ready. This is just this little triangular piece from sheet number three um, in front of the deck, uh, at the front end of the deck, and there are two others at the back end of the deck. They're all four the same. These are parts for the keel, and um, they, they're the inner parts of the keel, and the rudder and the uh, propeller shaft um, is going to go uh, alongside at the edge of these pieces. I'm not sure which side actually. They get laminated together. <laughs> not to worry about where they go exactly. But anyway, they're part of the keel. And um, so clean those up. And then we'll put those together with uh, the paper, uh, the binder clips. And the paper clamps, binder clips. And um, we should have just, probably have enough resin for all of them. We'll see. Again, uh, you've probably seen now, if you put too much resin on, you get an awful lot of squeeze out and clean up, and it's really not necessary. But at the same time, you don't want hollow spaces or voids where the pieces really aren't stuck together. Um, before, we haven't used pre-thickened, uh, or we've used pre-thickened, but we haven't used uh, resin that's thickened with silica. But um, on a job like this where there's so much surface area, we're never going to have any failure. So um, we're perfectly happy. But um, don't get too much buildup because um, the thickened might create a lump in the middle or something if you uh, put it on too, too heavily. So just a thin, thin surface, uh, just like we were doing before, except now the uh, material is not quite as runny. Uh, so you have to spread it. You have to do a little bit more active spreading and make sure you don't have, you know, heavy build up in one place and and not enough someplace else. Again, uh, I'm not demonstrating this as well as I should. This would be a good place for gloves. Okay, and then put the two pieces together and paper clamps. But don't get epoxy all over your fingers. I'm being very careful. I actually, despite uh, what I was doing, I really didn't get any epoxy on my fingers. I think we'll want one more clamp on there. It's not perfectly lined up. Let's get that bit. Now I'm getting a little more squeeze out on this than I really need. So I'll put a little, I'll do a little bit lighter. I'll clean off what I can and then I can sand off these, these parts. It's easy to sand these edges later. But um, I don't want to have to, I'm, <laughs> typically I'm a little bit lazy and I don't want to do any extra sanding if I don't have to. So um, I cleaned off what I could and I'll do a little bit lighter on the next, um, on the next layup. A little bit more at the back. Here. We're still going to have a little, little extra epoxy, but that's okay. Okay, let me set that right like that. And um, we'll do the same on these other two pieces and I think that probably will uh, will be enough. I don't think we'll have enough for the other keel pieces in this batch so we'll just um, leave it at that after we glue up these two pieces, the other two, uh, the same the exact same pieces as the first two we glued up. We'll glue these two together. Okay I think that's good. Check your work again. You can check all those measurements, you know, all the different ways of checking it. The ver horizontal, I mean, the, the, the pieces, the rudder support column is vertical, that it's lined up and points right towards the center line, and that the distance um, from the back edge of the 7A, 7B, uh, this back surface here, is 2 and 1 16th inch right to the top corner of the rudder support column. Actually, that's the bottom cor front corner. But since we have it upside down, it's the top corner. 
Um, so check those things again, and then make sure uh, nobody jiggles your table or anything, and leave it, and leave the room, and close the door. Okay, we'll uh, be back with you soon. <laughs> this is this is a fun project. It's a little bit different from some of our other kits in that they're more small pieces that are kind of fun to glue together and and sort of detail work and stuff. Um, but it goes really, it's going really quickly and I'm enjoying it immensely. So, a lot of fun. Okay, um, and when you finish, remember don't leave your brush in the container because then you'll have to get a drink more orange juice, get a new container. And um, if you have very much resin left in your container, you can scrape, you can clean it all out with the brush and wipe it off on a piece of paper and throw the paper away. Um, and then your container will be cleaner and easier to use. But at least smooth, don't leave bumpy epoxy in there, at least smooth all the surface out inside your container. Okay, good. Okay, let's see how our piece turned out. Here it is. Okay, first, um, let's check the alignment. Is that rudder support piece perfectly lined up with the center line? But yes, it is perfectly lined up with the center line. Uh, this line right along the top edge here is pointing right towards the center line, right towards the apex of the V. So great that way. And let's check to see if that rudder piece is vertical. And yes, it's, it's pretty darn close. Um, it's very easy to push it just a little bit to make it vertical. I think we're in very good shape there. Um, so that'll work for, very well for us. And let's check the, is it flush on the inside here? Right along this surface here, is that flush? Yes, it is exactly flush right there. Um, the rudder support piece and the inside of the U-shaped uh, piece, the horseshoe shaped piece, are exactly flush right at that point there so right right here they're perfectly flush exactly what we wanted and is our measurement correct from the apex of the V the back edge uh, the back surface of the 7AB at the right at the apex of the V not down uh, not down measuring horizontal but uh, measuring at an angle from the apex of the V to the front corner and there we are. Gosh, I don't know if you can read that, but it is exactly two and one sixteenth inches. Two inches and one sixteenth. So um, exactly what we we're aiming for. So um, very, very successful on this piece. Um, if you're off with any of those things, it's going to cause a little bit of building. Um, you'll have to do a few corrections later on. You may have to do a little bit more sanding or a little filling with epoxy. But um, as long as you're close, I think you'd be in pretty good shape with, with the next, um, when you start to install this piece. If it's um, really dramatically off, uh, <laughs> you may end up having to saw these pieces apart and, and glue them back with epoxy again. The um, advantage of working with epoxy is that you can fix anything, and if the final fit isn't perfect, you can sand some of the some of these pieces or if they're short already and not quite reaching you can add epoxy as a filler to make them reach so um so that's our great advantage working with epoxy as opposed to traditional glues that can't fill cannot fill gaps but epoxy is as strong as the materials that we're using to build the boat so we can fill any gaps with epoxy and have just as much strength and coherence as if the part fit perfectly. But these should fit perfectly, and I expect your parts, parts will turn out very, very nicely as well. Okay, now um, we can do, remember this piece sits in the boat this way up. Um, the bottom of the boat is here underneath the piece. Um, okay, um, so now we can do some two really quick drilling steps. One is to drill out the um, small holes that are probably filled up with epoxy on the corners of this piece. And those holes are just for wire ties to hold the sides in to that piece. So uh, we can drill those out. 
And I actually used my number 53 drill bit, which you're probably so excited about the idea of numbered bits. If you didn't have them already, you've probably gone out and bought a bunch of them. Um, and once you have a tool, you find you think, oh, do I want to buy it just for this one use? But once you have a tool, you find that you're ending, ending up using it for all sorts of things. And it's, it turns out it's pretty useful to have all these things. Um, and then I'm putting in a 1 16th inch bit. I'm going to extend the 1 16th inch bit pretty much as far as it'll go and still be in the chuck um, because I'm going to be drilling down into those blocks there. And the 1 16th inch bit is just barely long enough. Okay, now um, find your 422 servo that came in the kit and it's going to fit in right between those two blocks there. And we're going to drill yeah, put it, it's going to be right up tight against the 7AB bulk gun, and we're going to drill out the uh, holes for the screws that will hold the servo in. So we're drilling right down. See if you can see this, and I can see it to do it accurately. It's going to be at a funny angle for me. We're going to drill right down, right in the center of those placement holes, and we're going to drill all the way down perpendicular down through that block. right out the bottom of the block. This is a one, one si all four holes, one sixteenth inch bit here. So I just get centered in the hole nicely. And then that bit's just barely long enough as you can see. Okay, so I went all the way through the block. Now, um, there's still the possibility I'm the one six. This this is the this is the screw that goes in. Gee, that's hard to see in the screen, isn't it? Uh, hard to hold on to too. Um, there's some possibility that you might split those blocks um, with that screw. So we're going to re-drill those with a the next size up bit in our. Well, actually, we're, we're, we want to go to three thirty second inch. We could go five sixty fourth, but I think three thirty second inch is probably a little safer. Yeah, let's go 332nd inch, and we'll re-drill the top. If we drilled all the way through, now with this bit, uh, the screws wouldn't hold into anything, uh, because this bit's as big as the screw is, and bigger than the tip of the screw, bigger than the threaded tip of the screw is. So we only want to go in uh, about an eighth of an inch with this bit, just so the the top of the piece is drilled big enough for the bit, for the screw to screw into without trying to split the piece. And uh, if you go all the way through, you, if you've got a problem, you have to fill it with epoxy to correct. Um, here we go. Uh, so we're going to take a little blue tape and mark the bit at a point exactly one eighth of an inch from the tip of the bit. I think. Do it this way. And um, on your first hole, if you drill down into it far enough, too far, you'll push the tape up. So this is a visual mark. Not a, it's not going to stop the bit from going in. You'll just push the tape out of the way. So this is a visual thing. And now I'll take the servo out of position uh, so I can drill these holes. Like that. A little awkward drilling these holes so you can see it, but so this is the 332nd inch bit, just drilling in one eighth of an inch in the top of the hole. Okay, now we should be good. Uh, the screw threads will be down in the 1 16th inch part of the hole, but the shank, unthreaded shank of the screw will be in the 332nd inch part of the hole and um, so that that'll hold well but it won't split so that should be good and that was easy nice to follow up a kind of more uh, more difficult part of the building process with the drake tail support assembly uh, with something as easy as drilling those holes okay um, 
Now, in a minute, we'll move on to working on the bottom pieces, but I'll do a little prep work first. I'm going to cut uh, all the little wire ties first, and then we'll be putting the bottom pieces together. So it'll start to look like a boat. Oh, um, one more drilling thing. Um, <clears throat> remember, we match drilled the two bottom pieces. Let's, um, but then we put the doubler on, and as we anticipated, the uh, doubler fills and covers up some of the holes. Okay, uh, one more quick drilling uh, process. Remember, um, we match drilled uh, the holes into the second bottom piece, but when we glued on the uh, doubler, we knew we were going to be covering up some of those holes, and we'd have to re-drill them. So let's do that. Uh, redrilling those holes, um, three uh, three holes at the front, and one hole, um, I mean three holes at the back at the stern, and one hole at the bow. So um, we'll go back to our number 53 bit and drill out those holes. Um, and that's easy. And then we'll be uh, I'll do a little prep work. I'll cut the wire ties. Um, about a four inch tie should be uh, perfect. Then we'll wire the bottom together. You want to be pretty careful on these holes because you definitely want to be lined up exactly with the uh, original hole. So um, don't let the bits don't let the bit skid sideways out of that original hole. Okay, and we'll do the bottom the second bottom piece. Second bottom piece the same way. And I'll be back with my wire ties in just a minute and we'll get those bottom pieces put together. That'll be exciting. Well, We've got our little pile of uh, two-inch wire ties. Um, we cut uh, two-inch wire ties from the soft copper, and these are going to wire the two bottom pieces together. We're going to start with the bottom pieces laid together with the out what will be the outside surfaces facing each other, and the inside surfaces with the doublers are going to be. Uh, starting out on the outside of my book shape here, uh, the two covers of the book. Um, and we're going to wire these two pieces together with uh, the wire ties. It's probably easiest not to start right at one end um, because it's harder to hold the pieces lined up then. Start someplace in the middle with your first wire tie and slide it through. Now, um, you're probably wondering, how tight do I twist these? Well, it turns out that with this gauge of wire and the soft copper, that if you twist them about as tight as you can get them by hand, but don't use a tool, don't use pliers or anything, um, they'll come out just about the right tightness. Um, but use, use a fair amount of squeeze them pretty tight when you're twisting them and get them as tight as you can by hand and then you should be about right. Okay, there's one. And now I'm going to go to the all the way up to the bow to stabilize it. And then I'll go all the way to the stern and then I'll fill in the other ties. Just keep the pieces lined up just right while you're tightening them. And start out with the wire fairly tight before you start twisting it so you can squeeze it in on the sides so it conforms to the shape of the sides. Okay, and then one at the back. Go all the way to the very back now. Now if you if you start using pliers on this you'll probably start breaking the ties um, and you may get the loops so tight that piece won't open up correctly. So um, if you resort to pliers or to tighten these up, don't don't go to the maximum then. But with fingers, 
you can pretty much go as tight as you can get it and that should be just about right okay so that gives you an idea of the wire tie system we'll go ahead and fill in the other um, 12 uh, wire ties and be back uh, with you in just a minute just a jiffy okay we have all our wire ties in place all 15 of them and those are as tight as I can get them with my fingers but I did not use a tool to tighten them up because if you use a pair of pliers or something you get them so tight that you're not going to be able to do this next step and the next step is to open up the book like so keep the edges of the plywood lined up with itself and then when you get it to that stage there that's the inverse of what you want in the end. You can see it's still not flipped the right way. And so at this point, start at the back and just kind of coax it into flipping inside out. And there you go. A little bit more. Whoa, pop. Okay. And there we have it. Um, that looks really nice and tight uh, all along, except at the very front and the very back. So we'll tighten up those ties a little bit, keeping the pieces nicely lined up. At this point, using a pair of pliers is, is uh, not a bad plan. And these ones at the back. It's really the doubler that uh, it's harder for it to pop around when the doubler is there and so um, that's what pulled these a little bit looser. And keep the edges of the plywood lined up carefully while you're doing this. And I'm feeling underneath the boat to make sure I've got those edges lined up underneath. It's hard to tell from the top side. Okay, and there we have it. That's real clean and nice. You can see the beautiful shape that we've created. And looking along the bottom, it looks pretty tight. Maybe I could tighten this one just a little bit. I'm seeing a little, little gap there. So I'll tighten this one just a little bit more. You, uh, initially, you may find that you've broken a couple of these ties um, if you're not used to doing this kind of thing. Um, not a problem, just put new ones in. Okay, and there we've got a bottom in great shape. Now we're going to take um, floor number four. Remember, um, the two that you've laminated together uh, are 3A and th this 3A and 3B. We've numbered the floors from uh, the first one, number one is at the bow, and number 7AB is the very back one. And we're not going to put that one in yet. That's a little bit, we're, we're going to wait for that one. So 3A and then 3B, I mean 3A and 3B, 5A and 5B you can tell because they have the notch for the, um, the notch for the, uh, <laughs> see if you can see it. Uh, the notch for the uh, propeller shaft there. Okay, um, so let's start with, uh, so those are there. Um, the middle one between those is number four, and let's start with that one. Uh, so we'll count back. One, two, three, four. Um, <laughs> don't get these in the wrong place. Uh, make sure you count back carefully. And this will push the boat apart a little bit and you can make sure that your um, edge notches are sanded clean. There are no tabs left in the edge notches of your frames, your floors, um, because that would uh, then it wouldn't sit down. So your doubler should fit right up into the uh, notches at the very outside edges of your frames. Okay, now uh, time for the CA and we'll get this uh, boat going. Fair count again, one, two, three, four. Now we're not, uh, <clears throat> we're going to be putting um, epoxy fillets on these later. So the CA is just to get the initial, to get these uh, held in place initially. 
and get them square and everything and then we'll add the epoxy fillets. Check your center line. You want to make sure that the center line is lined up exactly with the joint between the bottom pieces and we're looking good. The reason for using CA here initially is that you can hold the piece in place while the CA sets up. And these want to be uh, lined essentially vertical to um, what you imagine the deck uh, will be. And straight across between your the notches in, that are cut in the doubler where you made pencil marks. And then hit them really good squirt of CA of the accelerator um, to make it set off quickly so you don't have to hold it too long. And check the center, make sure it's centered again. It looks good. Don't release it too soon or else it's just going to just fly out of place. Okay. And then, and then the other side, I'll turn it so you can see better. It's easiest to do one side at a time because you can press, you can get that one side positioned very precisely. Um, whereas it's a little bit hard to position the entire piece all the way across precisely all at once. Okay. Number four is in. Now let's um, let's leave. Uh, we're not going to do three A, uh, B, or five A B yet because they have to be positioned exactly right. If they're too close together or too far apart, the engine floor won't fit in there. Um, yeah, that's what that cutout is for. So we're going to wait on those until we um, uh, get the other ones in. Okay, but we can do, um, you no, know, it's not a bad idea to place these uh, so you make sure you're not putting them in the wrong place. Okay, and this will be um, 5A and B, and this will be 3A and B. Faced. Uh, the cutouts have to be facing each other when we get to this stage, but don't do, don't do those yet. Okay, let's go back to the back and do... Um, 6A uh, here. Check your center line, but if your doublers are glued on accurately, the center line almost almost has to be. Now I can do both sides of this one pretty easily, so I'm going to do all four tabs at once. This is where those pencil lines marking the um, little notches in the doubler um, so you can see those notches more easily. Those pencil lines are really helpful at this stage. Make sure that these um, frames are straight all the way across the boat, that they don't have a bit a big curve in them or something. And that should do it. Okay. Nice. The other thing you want to make sure is that the frames are all the way down in the bottom of the boat. That there's not space underneath the bottom of the, of the frame. Okay, and these are sitting in here really nicely. The first one is the trickiest one. These others are pretty... The boat's shape is kind of being held in place by the first one. Now this one I'm having to pull the side in just a teensy bit to make it tight on the frame. So that's a little bit different uh, than on the first two. This is pretty easy to do with one person, but if you did have a second person standing by, they could spritz the uh, accelerator onto the CA, and that would give you I mean you didn't have to take one of your hands off off of the piece. You do want to make sure that your your bottom seam is tight, that you're not forcing the bottom seam apart. And on again on this one, I'm pulling up on the uh, starboard side to 
squeeze it together to the frame. If I didn't have upwards pressure here on this starboard side, there'd be a little gap on that side between the bottom and the frame, which we didn't want. We would not want that. I'm holding this one a little bit longer because there's a little bit more outward pulling pressure on this frame. Um, so I want to make sure everything's set up well. Okay, let's see if that's got it. No, that didn't quite do it. One side took on that, and this side didn't quite get enough CA or didn't set up enough one or the other. Let's add another, another dot here and spritz that. Without the, if you don't hit it directly with the accelerator, it's, uh, it takes a lot longer to set up. So being able to aim the accelerator accurately is a big part of this process. Good. That's real tight. And then this front one. Now on this one, one side is fitting perfectly, the other side isn't quite fitting. I wonder if there was a tab that dropped in right there, or if the cutting file isn't exactly precise on that side. So um, we're going to just cut that back just a teensy bit. So it'll notch incorrectly. And we don't want these, uh, we don't want the frames to be held up out of place by the doubler. That should work. No, it looks just just right now. This one's a little bit fiddly, so I'm gonna glue one side. So now we have a bottom. Uh, beautiful shape to it, and everything is uh, stabilized and held pretty well by just the frames we've got in there already. Um, but now, next we wanna add our parts 3AB and 5AB uh, here. But they have to be spaced exactly right, so we're gonna use some um, the bottom of the engine uh, bed to space them and that's in sheet uh, 6 and it's this piece right up here in the top right hand corner oopsie of uh, trying to pop the other parts out of uh, sheet 6 and that pops out easily um, and here it is we'll clean those edges up and then we can um, make sure that we are getting 5A and 5, 5AB and 3AB um, exactly spaced right. Otherwise we'd have to, if they're too close together, we would have had to sand off a little bit of the engine bed and that's just a little bit more work. And if they were too far apart, it just wouldn't be quite as neat a fit. Okay, a little fuzz there, a little fuzz here. Good. Now obviously the first one isn't as critical um, because we can move the second one. So uh, just check and see how they look with your lines. And that looks pretty good there. Okay. And um, you also uh, have to make sure that sideways that they're correctly positioned sideways um, because this center frame is is holding everything. So um, so that's the other goal is make sure they're positioned sideways correctly. So let's start with um, the back frame and make sure you've. Uh, this is this is uh, the center line is quite critical on these. Um, so we'll start with the back frame, now that we've done an initial fit, and then we'll put that floor in place, and the engine floor in place, and position our five, uh, three A and B um, carefully. That is lying so nicely. Um, I'm going to do this in two, two sides again, um, the way we started with the first frame. A little bit more of a dot there. Check the center line. Center line looks good. Spritz. 
Okay, on this side. Okay, now the final fit and the final frame. Lay our RC deck in. Our um, engine uh, platform in. There. And we'll put that right there. Perfect on the center line there. And vertical. And let's grab that placement while we can. While we have it just right. On these, make sure you aren't tipping it in over the engine platform because um, then the engine platform wouldn't be able to lift out again. We don't want the engine platform in there permanently yet. Again, with the CA, temperature affects how long you have to hold it. The colder it is, uh, the longer it takes to set up. That's true of most, most chemical ac actions that colder temperature slows down the slows down the chemical reaction and you know this is rising up just a little bit at the outside edge so I'll put a little dot there hold it tight now you can see as we add structure the boat becomes stronger and stronger uh, this fairly thin plywood but um, it's three lambs of uh, okume and and as you add the inner structure, it really takes on a lot of strength. Okay, now you can remove your engine floor. There, and we have a perfect fit. So, beautiful. Next uh, step that we'll be working on will be with the sides. And the starting point. Well, let's get our cap. Remember to put your cap back on the CA. Uh, treating the CA correctly is part of what makes it so easy to use. If you forget to put your cap on, forget to wipe off the tip, or forget to put your cap on, um, the CA progressively gets more difficult to use. Um, wiping off the tip is really important because otherwise any CA that's gotten on the outside of the tip will um, set up under the cap, make the hard, cap hard to get off, and um, keep eventually keep the cap from screwing down tight enough to seal the bottle bottle uh, correctly. Okay, now check your wire ties again. Make sure everything looks tight and uh, that you don't have any big gaps anywhere. And uh, good. Now on the side pieces, let's set the bottom aside. There, on the side pieces, we're going to wire tie the bow together. And then we're going to um, try fitting it to the bottom piece and see how it fits. So um, you'll need four more two inch ties. And these are gonna be tied on the outside. Now these ones can be quite tight. So you can use a tool on these initially, you know, right away, and get them quite snug. Remember, you've already, before you put these wire ties in, you've already beveled the bows to fit together nicely, so they come together not as a sort of square front, but as a sharp, pointy surface. Okay. Here we are. Now let's set the two together. Now those little tabs that you glued on the bottom edge of the sides are sitting right on the top edge of the uh, bottom piece. And um, looks like we have the bow angle about right. A little fiddly again here. And we're actually going to do fillets on the bottom before we really put this together. We're just kind of looking at it and see how it's going to go. Um, yeah, that looks like it'll go really well. And these side pieces will come back to the 7AB. Okay, so let's set the side pieces aside for now. 
and we'll go back to our bottom piece and get the um, bottom piece all filleted up. We'll do fillets along each of the frames on the bottom piece and along the center line as well, just back to 7A, uh, to 6A, uh, 6, the frame 6. So we'll just do the center line back to frame 6. We will not do any farther back in the back of the boat because we want this area still to be able to um, uh, be flexible. So when we fit in 7A, uh, 7B, or yeah, here it is in fact, when we fit in this whole piece, we can still be adjusting the angles um, to, uh, to fit everything, the sides and the bottom. You can see this is going to spread just a little bit more back here to get this piece in. So anyway, um, don't 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 uh, glue your center seam behind six A, uh, behind frame six. Okay, I'll mix up uh, some epoxy. Looks like we'll use. Um, let's start with uh, three uh, large marks and see how far we get with that. Uh, just a quick note here. Um, it's a little rare, but uh, but you will. It does happen occasionally. It depends on. A number of factors, and we're not quite sure what they all are. Um, but sometimes epoxy, this is the pre thickened, sometimes epoxy will um, crystallize, just like honey will. Um, and uh, just like honey, some, some batches of honey, some honey uh, lasts for years without crystallizing, and others crystallize, it seems, in just a couple of weeks. Um, so uh, this is pre thickened, but it's not very usable in this form. And so um, to return it to its normal state, uh, you just want to heat it up. Uh, so I'm using uh, the bottom of an orange juice container and um, because it has a metal bottom so it makes it so it heats quite quickly and I'm just heating it up on a hundred watt light bulb, often setting um, the container out in direct sunlight on a warm day will do just as well. So it doesn't take a lot of a lot of heat if you're going to go at it with a um, heat gun or hair dryer, um, hair dryer is probably safer. You don't want to melt the plastic container that the epoxy is in by heating it up too uh, too quickly, too hard. Um, anyway, uh, so we'll get this into its real uh, normal shape and then we'll measure our three large marks and start to do our fillets. Now the last note is the clear epoxy can also um, can also uh, uh, have crystallized and um, in that case you just see it, it turns it a little bit white and lumpy and um, not as fluid so if you see white and lumpy in your clear resin heat that up as well and return it to its normal state. Uh, just to show you the results of heating up the pre-thickened remember it wouldn't stay on the it wouldn't come off the spoon even now um, it's just you know very liquid Still a little warm, actually. It'd probably be a little less liquid than this when it cools off. But um, the crystallizing is all taken care of. And we've mixed up three large marks of pre-thickened with three small marks of hardener. And uh, the first step, we're just going to um, brush on either side of each of these and up the edge of each of the uh, floor frames, the V-frames, uh, about a quarter of an inch on either side and up a quarter of an inch. Um, because even though this is pre-thickened, before it has the phenolic powder in it, it's still liquid enough to saturate the wood really nicely. So, um, so we'll just use this same mixture and then we'll add, for our fillets, we'll add phenolic powder. And at that point it's thick enough that it's not going to saturate the wood. Um, and so you'd be sticking to the surface of the wood rather than binding down into the wood grain below the surface. Okay, now we'll um, coat along the center line and um, 
we'll be filleting along the center line, but we don't want to fill it right over our wire ties um, because we'll want to remove those. So we're going to leave little gaps where the wire ties are and we'll fill those areas in later. So, um, you know, getting a little epoxy on the wire ties is okay, but try not to get them plastered with epoxy. Again, on about, qu about a quarter of an inch on either side of the center line uh, will be just right for your fillet. This uh, epoxy is much stronger than most people realize. And so the inclination, the tendency is to use a lot more epoxy than necessary. Um, which doesn't really add, it doesn't add significantly to the strength. Um, because it's already much stronger than it needs to be. And um, just makes it a little less, less neat and tidy and clean. So um, very small amounts of epoxy are very strong. Okay, once you get that all spread, then it's time to mix in the silica, uh, the uh, phenolic powder. And the silica is what's already in the pre-mixed, uh, pre-thickened epoxy. So we'll mix in some of the phenolic powder and get a nice creamy smooth mixture. I love the trick to the epoxy work going really smoothly is to get these mixtures exactly right. So don't, that's about half a teaspoon here we'll start with. Um, if you get them too dry, it's really hard to work with them, uh, the mixture. Um, it just doesn't spread smoothly and it doesn't, um, little sharp barbs um, from spreading don't fade back into the overall mixture, overall surface and form a smooth surface again. Um, so it's much harder if you and if it's too runny, of course, then your fillets aren't going to stay in place. They're going to sag down. And so here's, uh, see if you can see that. Here's a mixture that's sagging a little more than I want. And so let's add the tip of a teaspoon further and see what we've got. So we've added um, a little bit more phenolic powder here. Let's see how this looks. Still very creamy and smooth, and these are pretty small fillets. A little bit more sag than I want though. So let's add another, about the same amount again, just the tip of the teaspoon, about a quarter of a teaspoon at the most. And let's mix that in. Now we're looking pretty good. Let's try this sag test here. That's a pretty big glob. More sag than we want still. Another a little less than a quarter of a teaspoon this time, right on the tip. If we did any more now, it'd get too dry and sort of sticky and putty like. More like um, not very spreadable peanut butter instead of like mayonnaise. Okay, so that's a big blob. You can see it's still sagging a little bit. Can you see that against the background? Still sagging a little bit, but it's pretty, it'll eventually fall off. But if I had a smaller blob, um, like this, it would probably set up just about the way it is right there. So, um, so and we're still creamy and smooth, so looks good. Okay, now, um, these fillets, we're going to do with our um, popsicle stick. And, which we had right here a minute ago. Um, here it is. So we'll clean this off. And new technique here. We'll just start right here in the middle. And place the epoxy and then spread it. And that makes a real nice, clean, cute little fillet there. And then, when we get it all spread, we'll take a little, we'll make a little plywood tool from the scraps along the edge of our uh, sheets of parts and scrape off the excess along the edge that squeezes, that pushes out as we do our fillet. 
pushes off to the edge as we do our fillet. Okay, I don't know if you can see how nice that is, but it's a very cute little fillet there. Um, see right in there? Uh, it lays right in there. And um, it is real clean and neat. So right in, right along there. Just the shape of the tip of the popsicle stick. I'm going to do a couple of fillets, then I'll clean them off, and then I'll do a couple more, and it'll work all along. Now, if it's really warm where you're working, if it's over 70 degrees, much, you know, like, or over 75, you might want to mix smaller batches, like, maybe start, start at the beginning with just two pre-thickened, um, because doing these fillets is, you know, takes a little bit more time and you don't want to be too rushed. And if the epoxy starts to get thicker, it's going to um, be harder to do a real nice fillet. It won't be as creamy and smooth as you want. Okay, and then um, let's use this for cleaning off. And we'll just sand it to a square tip first. This is actually the same uh, wand that we used before uh, on our bracing or gluing project. And we'll do a bit of a chisel tip on it. And uh, let's do it again. Just uh, sanding it from one side, not, not both sides. Okay, and then this will work really nicely to just clean off that excess epoxy and leave a clean surface. And that epoxy we can use over here. Actually, I really have to work from the side sliding down towards the middle. I don't know why, but the angle is better that way. The goal is not to disturb your fillet as you, as you clean it up. Um, if you're scraping your fillet back off, then you'll have to redo your fillet. And most of this work won't be visible, but you'll know. <laughs> so, it's kind of fun to do it precisely and neatly. Although, it won't really affect the final, final strength or beauty of your boat at all. You do want to make sure on this uh, 3AB that you don't have any epoxy up in the um, up in the cutout where the engine uh, bed lies because that will make your life more difficult later and there that's that's, that's the first frame all done and cleaned up um, I'll show you the we'll do the center line in this area too and show you how that goes now this isn't really quite like a real fillet because uh, it's such a shallow uh, V. We'll go right up to the wire, but not onto the wire there. Um, and then along here, because uh, we'll pull those wires out later, and then we'll uh, continue our fillet where those wires were sitting. Now, um, the next batch, this won't be enough for all these fillets um, and the center line. The next batch, so, um, we'll only mix uh, two, but if it's really warm where you are, just mix one. Because uh, otherwise you're going to be running out of time on this, and it is a little bit more time consuming doing these, you know, kind of really neat and fairly precise fillets in here. And if you're too rushed, it just won't... They'll be strong enough and work fine, but won't be quite as pretty. Okay, well that's um, that's how it goes. I'll give you a close-up look, and then we will let you uh, keep going. So you can see the nice clean fillet along the center line there. Not a very big fillet. It's about three eighths of an inch wide, um, and more or less flat across the top, uh, it dips down a little bit in the middle, and the nice fillet on each side of frame 3AB. Okay, 
So finish that up, and um, we will be back with you soon. Remember though, don't do anything behind six, frame six. No center line fillet because that angle is going to change. This this flares out quite a bit more back behind it. Okay, good. So we finished spreading all our fillets on all the um, frames, the V floor frames, and did a partial fillet along the bottom. Everywhere there wasn't a wire tie, we have um, a fillet, and we'll fill in around the for the after we pull out the wire ties. After all the epoxy is set up, we'll pull out those wire ties and fill in those gaps in our fillet. And we did not do any um, epoxy behind the sixth, uh, sixth frame back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we went all the way to the bow. At the bow, the very tips of the bow, we noticed a little bit of a gap between the two points of the bow. So we put a rubber band around that. Um, kind of just enough to pull those together tight. And uh, now we just let it set up. Oh, and we did... Um, Find the, remember the, the initial mixture um, was three pre-thickened and that uh, went quite a ways as far as um, coating the wood first and then doing uh, adding phenolic and doing some of the fillets and then it just uh, took us another two uh, large marks of pre-thickened and that finished everything up um, absolutely perfectly there was essentially nothing left um, so, but everything was, um, we didn't want any more epoxy than what we had. So two more uh, large marks of pre-thickened was exactly right. Um, and that was using up, you know, uh, using in addition um, to spreading our fillets, cleaning them off and using all the epoxy that we cleaned off along the edges uh, at the same time. So um, now we just let this set up and we have a very, we will have a very, very strong um, bottom to our boat. So, um, splendid. And um, next step will be uh, working with the sides and um, getting the sides incorporated and taped in place and the uh, drake tail uh, support uh, piece um, will then be added and this uh, bulkhead 7A, 7B. So moving right along with getting this boat uh, all together. <laughs> Fun project. Okay, talk to you soon. A quick discussion about the deck. Uh, a couple of possibilities here. Um, first of all, uh, take the deck out of section um, uh, sheet number three and um, carefully without breaking the edges or breaking the um, thin pieces along the outside edge of the deck. Um, because if you do decide you want to do uh, planking lines on the deck, that is one way to do it, to use the outside edge of the surrounding piece of plywood, the scrap, uh, which essentially is going to be the scrap piece of plywood, um, to uh, trace your deck lines on the deck in parallel lines, parallel to the outside edge. Um, to do that, you first have, you have to be very careful with this piece because it is delicate. But to um, do that, first you have to make sure you've sanded off all the tabs on the inside and have a perfectly clean surface along here. If your finger feels any roughness um, in that uh, surface, you're going to see a bump on your uh, deck lines. And then um, Mark the uh, deck, decide which is the best side of the deck, sand the deck nicely with 220 grit sandpaper, the best side, choose your best side. I'd say the, um, what actually would have been the bottom side of the deck when we cut it out, was the uh, side, the grain I like the best. So um, you can use either side of the deck. So um, make, first make a quarter inch mark in from the side, about two inches back from the bow and then another quarter inch mark um, in from the side just about a midships and then another quarter inch mark in from the side um, towards the stern and then a final one at the very back. And those give you some uh, guide marks just very very light marks to fairly visible and then 
with your cleanly sanded edge you can lay that down lining up with the marks starting with your template lined up at the bow and using the first two marks draw that line to the midships and then you're going to have to reposition your template sliding forwards to uh, line up with your other marks and draw the rest of your line uh, around to the stern. Um, and then keep moving your, line, your template in a quarter of an inch, um, make quarter inch marks moving in, redraw. Now, um, if you don't have a steady hand or you don't, you just want to build the boat and move ahead, the standard deck without any deck lines is very elegant too. And in fact, it really emphasizes the natural grain of the wood more. So, um, if you enjoy uh, the detail work, it can look quite nice. Those pencil lines, when they're varnished over, do do look convincing, like uh, convincingly like planks. And you can use um, a mahogany stain uh, varnish, um, mahogany stain mixed in with your varnish on some of the planks, planks to accent the um, the different um, different contours of the wood or the different, um, you know, the king plank versus the edge plank um, and then the planks towards the middle can be natural colored so it gives the effect of um, the teak deck in the middle and mahogany edges um, so it can be effective and the instructions go into quite a bit of detail in the manual about that but I wanted to um, build this one with the standard deck um, because the prototype that Carl has built out in Hawaii as the planked deck uh, effect and uh, I wanted you to see how nice the standard deck can look as well. Also this is a little bit faster to do it the standard way. Um, so if you don't feel uh, excited about the decking, don't feel you're missing anything, um, Ether Approach is turns out a beautiful boat and very very dashing and elegant. And there is a lot of uh, detail work when you get to the combing around the cockpit. Um, that's a beautiful piece of mahogany and that uh, accents really nicely. And um, also the uh, rail along the edge of the boat is a beautiful piece of mahogany um, as well, which accents. Um, so you have a lot of color and different woods involved in the boat already without doing the uh, faux planking uh, on the deck. Okay, so um, Sand the side of the deck that you like the best. Make sure it doesn't have any uh, blemishes that you didn't, didn't notice before as you sand it. And um, then flip the deck over upside down. And we're going to work this evening on the uh, stiffening pieces that go across the deck to hold the deck uh, stiffer. Um, four of the pieces go in front of the cockpit cutout. Uh, one goes right behind the cockpit cutout. And three of them go across inside the cockpit cut out and you think well that'll look awkward to have pieces going right across the cockpit cut out um, but uh, after we glue the deck in we need those to be all the way across to stiffen the deck while we glue the deck in place but um, after we glue the deck in the center piece um, in the cockpit ply the center ply plywood piece of the cockpit uh, will be uh, taken out and the um, crust pieces, stiffening crust pieces, will be cut off flush with the inside edge of the cockpit. So not to worry about how that will look. Okay, the um, stiffening pieces, we need to get them, we want them to be perpendicular to a center line, so first we need to get a center line on here. And the way to get your center line, for the bow is obvious, um, point at the bow. Uh, back here, measure the width of the cockpit cut out. I'm going to measure, you know, rather than doing complicated math with fractions and stuff, it's easier and probably in the end more precise to um, measure to a more even number. So I'm going to measure that as four and a half. Then I'm going to slide my ruler sideways just enough so it's not really at either corner. It's about a sixteenth of an inch in from this corner here. 
and a sixteenth of an inch in from this corner. The four and a half mark is in a sixteenth of an inch in from this corner, and the end of the ruler is a sixteenth in from this corner. So half of four and a half is two and a quarter, and so I can make that two and a quarter mark right there, and that's the center. Um, you're more likely to measure it, I mean, it's measured really precisely. I would say it was four and nine sixteenths, but um, you're more likely to make a mistake. It's also, you have to use your, you don't want to use up all your brain energy or brain power uh, on something like that. So it's easier just to divide four and a half in half and have the ruler just, you can, you can eyeball that. Uh, a sixteenth at each end is easy to eyeball. Okay, now we've got our center line mark there, and if you have the luxury of a four foot straight edge, um, you're all set. You can just lay that down right to the tip. Remember, uh, if you put the straight edge right on the tip, you're, um, or on, right on your mark, you're, your line's going to be off center because the pencil line has a certain width to it. And so move the straight edge so it's very, very slightly off center, just the amount of the thickness of your pencil line off center. And then do a test at your mark to see if you've guessed the thickness of your pencil line correctly. And there we are, it looks good. Make sure this is the back side of the deck now. And draw your pencil line right on across all of this stuff because we'll want to be able to center all our pieces. And Coming on up to the bow, make sure your pencil line is going to work at the tip as well. And there. Okay, there's our center line. If you're um, working with a shorter uh, rule, um, this is a 30 inch rule, a 29 inch rule, um, you can do pretty good work by just measuring a square across as possible. Um, and again you can do the same trick. I'm getting eight and uh, you know eight and three eighths, but I'm gonna make that eight and a half by sliding the ruler a little bit so it's overhanging here and the eight and a half is overhanging the same out here. And then I'd go to four and a quarter and make my mark on the center line there. Um, and then I can do it in two steps from the bow to there to that mark and then from that mark back to my mark at the back edge of the cockpit. And since my ruler overlaps that center line, um, where I've drawn the center line, I can make sure I've got everything, you know, that is parallel to the line I drew from the front of the boat when I draw the line from the back of the boat. Okay, now the um, stiffener, stiffener pieces are in part uh, sheet number six. And they are, I'll flip this around so you can see exactly where they're located. They are these um, narrow pieces here and here. There are eight of them. And uh, so we can just pop those out. Um, if you press from behind and push right at the tabs, you're going to be able to pop those out without having to use a knife to cut the tabs. Um, it's just on the really delicate parts, so we want to be careful and sometimes use the knife to cut the tabs. Okay, so we'll pop those out and sand the edges flat and um, I'll get the rest of those out in a minute. And um, now we want to also um, leave the rest of those parts in place. It's easier to find them. Uh, we want to put in our cross lines using a square. Um, and at the correct markings, at the correct positions. So the, uh, we're measuring back from the point at the bow, four and a half inches, and then eight inches. So um, let's uh, line that up with the bow. We come back four and a half inches, make a cross mark. Come back eight inches, make a cross mark. And then 11, and then 13 and a half. 11, and now we have to switch to longer ruler. Line that up precisely. So 11, 13 and a half. 
and then um, 19 and then 27 and a half and then um, 32 and a half and 39 good and then with the square you want to draw lines perpendicular all the way across so you can draw the number of ways to do that obviously you can draw it out to one side and then just use your straight edge uh, shorter ruler to carry it on across the other side so I'm going to draw these out perpendicular I'll keep going all the way back doing these lines across and then I'll come back to these lines with my short straight edge and just carry them across all the way across the other side. Remember this is on the back side of your deck. You don't want all these lines to be showing on the top of the deck. So don't, don't mess up with that. Okay, like so. And I'll keep, I'll go all the way along with the rest of the eight and I'm going to sand the edges of the pieces, punch out the rest of the pieces and sand the edges and we'll be back in just a minute back with you. Okay, talk to you in a minute.